So joining us now is the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner. He recently introduced a bipartisan bill expanding President Biden's legal authority to ban TikTok nationwide. So, hello. We're wondering what he will be listening to today. Thank you so much for joining us. So are you zeroing in on choose answers on what TikTok does with this user data? What are you going to zero in on today? Well, a couple things. First of all, it's even worse than your data, and I loved it, the earlier presentation. <clears throat> on average, TikTok users are using TikTok about 90 minutes a day. Uh, I, I bet you wish every one of the CNN viewers spent 90 minutes a day on, on CNN. Uh, and respectfully, what the, uh, what the TikTok CEO says, of course, ByteDance would never turn this over to the Communist Party. He doesn't have any say in that. China changed its law in 2017 that requires every company, when requested, to turn over data to the government. So the notion, and one of the geniuses of TikTok, is it learns from you every time you're on the site. It starts to get to know you, what you like better than even what you know. Do you want all that information ultimately residing under the guise of the Communist Party of China, number one. Number two, this is a powerful propaganda machine if it's used that way. You pointed out that, candidly, the TikTok version that Chinese kids see doesn't have the kind of uh, stuff that, that our kids see. It emphasizes science, engineering, be a good student, be a patriot. Um, this is an incredible misinformation, disinformation machine. I'm not saying they're doing it right now, mm -hmm. but that potential, if President Xi in China wants to somehow invade, wants to invade Taiwan, and suddenly folks not only in, in America but around the world are starting to see videos that uh, reinforces that kind of message, that is a propaganda tool uh, that makes every, every other possibility pale. So I think there needs to be a rules-based approach that says when we've got technology from countries like China and Russia, there needs to be the tools that say if they pose a national security threat, um, we will give the Secretary of Commerce uh, tools to take care of that. We've got now 10 Democrats, 10 Republicans, backing of the administration. This is not the first time we've had this kind of issue. A few years back, it was the Chinese telecom company Huawei. Before that, it was the Russian software company Kaspersky. We need a rules-based yeah. approach that takes on foreign technology from adversarial nations. Senator, given that, is there anything the CEO can say today to convince you that TikTok isn't a national security threat? I, I've respectfully met with the CEO, I've met with the TikTok team, I've heard them out. Uh, I don't think they are owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company. At the end of the day, I don't think they're masters of their own fate. Chinese law trumps anything that the, the corporate management wants to do. And I would point out one other thing that's, that I think will make, hopefully make the point. President Xi and the Chinese leadership have said, you know, they would rather get rid of TikTok in America than give up the source code, the, the magic formula that resides in Beijing uh, if through divestiture part of the requirement was that source code had to be located in America. There's two, two points of, of fact here, Senator, and I, I think a lot of people share your sure. concerns, but our Brian Fung did a great fact check just on what we actually know versus the fears that are laid out. There is no public evidence that the Chinese government has actually spied on people through TikTok. There was that surveillance of journalists, which was very troubling. They were fired. Terrible that happened. But also to date, no public evidence that Beijing has harvested TikTok's commercial data for intelligence or other purposes. I, I just wonder if you have any fear about choking well, something off that helps me, a lot just, of let me try to, creators. Yeah. Let me just finish the question. Choking something off that, that, sure. that means a lot to a lot of creators and small businesses and is a source of revenue for them in that way uh, before these worst fears are realized. I've read through your Restrict Act. I know what it does, but just respond to that concern. Sure. Let me, let me uh, do it in a reverse order. First of all, there's a lot of creative stuff on TikTok. There, we've seen the influencers, uh, they make their living off of this. And you know, frankly, there are other American sites, YouTube and others, I, my understanding at least, reimburse at a higher level. I absolutely believe in the market. If, if TikTok were somehow to drop away tomorrow, whether it's an American company, a French company, an Indian company, there will be a replacement site 
where people can still be creative and uh, earn that kind of living. I, I believe the market will provide that, number one. Number two, uh, on the question of no evidence, respectfully, um, you know, we see press report after press report, uh, and you know, TikTok says, "Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Chinese engineers got it this time. Chinese engineers got it this another time." You've got, frankly, individuals who are whistleblowers coming out, mm -hmm. and I think this threat is real. And one of the things that my legislation would do is require the intelligence community to declassify as much information as possible, so it's not, "Don't just trust the government." And final point I make is this: this is not just an issue in the United States. Look at the other nations. Canada is banned out off of their government phones. Britain has the same. Recently, the Netherlands said, if you're a journalist, don't have this on your phone because the Chinese yeah. are monitoring your journalistic activities. And India has already banned it outright. We, we want to ask you about banking as well, Caitlin. Well, I, sure. obviously, we, we saw what happened yesterday. I know you wanted to see a, a pause in the interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Obviously, that did not happen yesterday. We saw. What we heard from Jay Powell, but I had a separate question from you, which is on donations you received from SVB, which you said you would return. Um, I believe that there's malfeasance to be found. Why not just return them now, though, Senator? Because, well, listen, if there's malfeasance, and I believe, you know, it sure as heck appears to me that uh, the bank was a little bit asleep at the switch and the basic prudential regulation uh, didn't kick in. This was and banking 101, there was an interest rate mismatch. Um, I will absolutely return at once we've seen the results of how this came about. If there's malfeasance, this money goes back. Uh, that'll be, we'll figure that out by May 1st. That's when the vice chair of the, uh, the Fed will make its report. The other thing that I think we have to look at this, and I don't have a good answer on this, is we've never seen a run driven by the internet this quickly. Mm -hmm. $42 billion came out of this bank in one day in six hours. That's the equivalent of 25 cents on every dollar. And candidly, there were some folks from the venture capital community who I believe incited this run. Uh, I'm not sure that's illegal, but it sure seems it pretty darn immoral. But we got to get the answers first. And if there needs to be, for example, corrections yeah. in the reforms that I supported back in 2018, count me in. Can I think at the end of the day, this is going to be, though, a basic failure of Prudential Regulation 101. Can I just ask a follow up to that? Because according to public filings over the last sure. 10 years, your campaign and your team has received over $21,000 from SVB, including 5,600 from the former CEO, Gary Becker. I think everyone agrees there was certainly mismanagement, at the least, at that firm in terms of interest rate uh, protections. You've called for, in just the past week, for executives and their bonuses from SVB to be clawed back. Why should theirs be clawed back and your campaign donations not be returned? First and foremost, Campaign contributions have never affected any policy decision I've ever made, full stop. And I will make the determination once the report is done, and I expect I'll probably be uh, giving this back to charity the way a couple of other members have, but I do think we ought to get our facts first. Um, and when we see the report, and matter of fact, I'm going to get a chance to talk to Mr. Barr next week in a public hearing. If he's got an interim report and there is the evidence that uh, malfeasance, clearly this bank, it appears at least, didn't have a risk officer eight of the last 12 months. That's another glaring red flag. Uh, I and I think others uh, will, will take that action. Mm -hmm. But let's get the facts first. I okay. mean, the irony is some folks are proposing a solution set before we actually have the facts. Let's yeah. get the facts, correct it, make sure it doesn't happen again. And I sure as heck believe there ought to be clawbacks if there is the malfeasance that uh, you've suggested. All right, we understand. And a, a full investigation and getting the reports, okay, that, that's certainly smart. Can we just, get, I just want to get back to bottom line, this TikTok and ByteDance. Because there are lots of apps out there who get our information you know, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and so on, Meta. The big difference for you, because people at home are watching, why is this any different? Why is TikTok any difference? Is the big difference the Chinese Communist government having access to our information? Is that the bottom line here? The bottom line is that the Chinese Communist Party being able to access that data 
and potentially using it for nefarious purposes, spying on folks uh, that may be part of the Chinese diaspora, frankly, that are against the government, and also this being used as a propaganda tool. Now, on the American sites, listen, I think there ought to be privacy rules. I think there ought to be data portability. I think we need reforms on the Section 230, which, frankly, gives these American sites a get-out-of-jail-free card no matter what they put forward, and I think Congress ought to act on that. But as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, uh, I believe TikTok poses a national security threat. There it and is. before all the potential bad action takes place, we ought to act. There's the answer. Thank you. And we'll be watching. We appreciate you joining us Thanks. this morning. Thanks Thank so you. much, Senator. Thank you.